Okay, what's up you guys? How are we? And what is going on? Welcome to another morning of reactions on my channel. Now if I can just get this hat off, on, backwards, forwards. Look, I just don't know. And because of that, I've already wasted 30 seconds of your time. Today guys, I'm happy to say we're going to continue down the list of the top uh, draft picks from the 2020 draft. Today's video begins with a beast. And that's really all I can say. An absolute beast. An absolute men among boys. Or at least physically that is. We're talking about Mackay Becton, the 11th pick in the 2020 draft. He went to the New York Jets. I don't know a hell of a lot about the New York Jets team. In fact, the only player I ever paid attention to last year was Le'Veon Bell. And in the preseason, Valentine Holmes. Although, come to think of it, they did get the first pick in the 2019 draft, which was, if memory serves me correctly, no, it was Kyla, I'm talking about Quinnen Williams, defensive tackle, defensive tackle, okay, so they've got one on each side of the ball, alright, so guys, today's video is focused on Mackay Becton, you know, this guy, as far as his size, I think he ran like a 5'11", 40 yard dash, at 360 pounds, and that basically broke the internet, as soon as that happened, um, so basically guys, this, this is... I guess the closest thing you're going to get to a real life giant who can actually move sideways, backwards and forwards, and can probably jump at least 30 inches, but we're going to find all that out. You know, linemen aren't my favorite. They don't have the biggest highlight tapes, but they are so, so important to the success of a football team. And that's why we're doing this. Mackay Becton, born April 18th, 1999, is American football offensive tackle for the Jets, played college football at Louisville and was selected 11th overall by the Jets in the 2020 draft. So, ah, one thing. Videos on a nice, fresh Christchurch morning calls for one thing, and one thing only. A fresh pot of coffee. Let's go. I've been, I've been working to the morning, yeah. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Tell him I'm a lane, I've been praying Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta say this thing, I'm the same I don't need another person telling me I can't Becton attended Highland Springs High School in Highland Springs, Virginia He was regarded as a three-star prospect Ranked as the number 43 offensive tackle and number 405 overall recruit in the 24-7 sports composite Becton was recruited by 31 schools to play football but by February 1st, 2017, National Signing Day, he had narrowed the choice to five schools. And they were, in no particular order, Louisville, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Michigan, and Oregon. While he had been heavily recruited by Virginia, he ultimately chose Louisville on signing day. And, uh, well, this, this real-life giant, like I said, um, he's two meters tall, guys. He's two meters tall. 21 years of age, six foot seven, 364 pounds. I, I, it just blows your mind, doesn't it? It, it absolutely blows your mind. How is that even possible? Those are God-given gifts. But what I do want to know is, when did he actually reach that size? What size was he at at the end of high school? Because he was only a three-star recruit, and if he had have had, you know, somewhat of that size back then, probably would have been a, a four or five-star recruit, but hopefully we find that out. Becton played as a freshman in the 2017 season. This is a recurring theme, guys. There's two things that I find. There's two things that I normally find with these first round draft picks in college. The first thing is that during their freshman year, they start. They play games, which is not always what happens. The second thing is that when they come to finish their senior year, they usually forego it because they obviously just want to get in the NFL. They feel like their draft stock's high enough. And that's exactly what's happened here. Holy motherfucking shit. That's the biggest hand size I've ever seen in pre-draft measurables. Ten and three quarters of an inch. <laughs> oh my gosh. Becton played in 13 games during his freshman year, started in 11. During the first four games of the season, he was rated the, the highest freshman in the country by Pro Football Focus. And during the last seven, he was the best pass blocker in the ACC, allowing six pressures in 312 snaps. Well... Wow. Um, who's, the, uh, who's the quarterback for the Jets? Because they'll be interested in that. He was named a starting tackle for the 2018 season and started every game of the season. 
bringing his total number of games started to 23. And I would assume that even after just his sophomore season, probably would have played more games than a lot of the seniors. Beckton was again named a starting tackle for the 2019 season. He received first team all ACC honors after the conclusion of the regular season. He decided to forego his senior season and sit out Louisville's bowl game and declared for the 2020 draft. So actually there's three things that I've realized. They start their first year, they forego their senior season, and because of that, the sacrifice that they have to make is they, they're pretty much always in a bowl game of some sort, and they don't play, which would be extremely difficult. But he's into the pros now, the big leagues. Selected 11th overall by the New York Jets. We've got a 5'10", 40-yard dash, and 23 reps on the bench press. This fella is 165 kilograms, and his height is not 6'7". It's 6 foot 7 and 3 eighths of an inch. So let's call it 6 8. So with all that being said, let's go to YouTube. I typed in his name, but let's do it again. So, uh, you know, being a lineman, there's not, there's not going to be a huge amount of, of highlight tape. But what we do find is quite a bit of film work, quite a bit of film study. And if not that, then we're definitely going to hear some opinions from, you know, some people in the know. So let me choose our first video. Mackay Beckton NFL Draft Tape. I think this should be pretty good. Mackay Beckton started 35 games in his three years at Louisville, including every game the last two seasons at offensive tackle. To go along with some great game tape he put up in the 2019 season with the Cardinals, he also wowed scouts with his athleticism at the NFL Combine. The six foot seven and three quarters, 364 pound tackle ran the 40 yard dash in just 5.1 seconds. Beckton appears to be an NFL coach's dream and is expected to be drafted early and play left tackle next season. So this was before the draft. Let's have a look. Now, no, okay, no. Before we do this, there's two other offensive linemen that I have looked at. The first was Andrew Thomas, 6'5", 320. The second was Tristan Wirfs, 6'6", 320. And this guy is on another level. 40 pounds more, two inches more. Bro, can you imagine nearly 11 inch hands grabbing you, trying to dominate you, grabbing your fucking chest guard and going poof, you know, punching, punching in the mouth. Those hands punching you in the mouth? No! <laughs> Not, not <laughs> oh jeez! Incredible. Hell no! Big Beckton. <laughs> Levy on Bell be licking his chops. How old is he? 21. At the time that this video was produced, it was three days before his 21st birthday. Bro, he can, he, he's got the speed to actually keep up with a lot of these is key here. defensive linemen. Look at that. We saw, oh my God, we saw a similar situation with Andrew Thomas where, you know, when, when push comes to shove and this guy starts to feel as though he's losing that contest, he's just going to fucking stomp those feet in, stomp that lower body in, coil those hips up. I mean, you're not going to push this guy over. You ain't. Unless you can get him off balance, in which case you're probably going to have, you're going to at least have to be big enough with enough agility to get around him. Like, imagine standing up against that guy. Cool. Okay. So we did read that he, he only let, in 300 and something snaps, he let six, six snaps pressure the quarterback. Oh, 
Bro, right, let's see. I think that I think he got him. He got him airborne. Bro, right, look at this. He's in the air, and when you're in the air, you don't have one foot on the ground. Um, you've basically lost all control, all power, and all it takes is a <laughs> from Big Beckton. Whoo! Yeah. Fucking hell. Well, he can either, well, 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 clearly he can either punch you in the mouth or he can grass cut your legs. <laughs> so it was his mission just to stop that guy. Get him down. One hand. Missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's finishing. That's finishing. Staying in front. Staying in front is the main thing, isn't it? As a lineman, you want to stay in front. You want to stay square, as, as square as possible. Oh my god. Well, that is important. That he's a great person. Okay, so that's our look. That's our look at Mackay Beckton's college football highlights for Louisville. So we're going to go back. I want to watch one more video. I want to watch... You know what? I want to watch the ESPN crew marvel at Beckton's highlights. Let's see. Actually... We've seen that. Uh, Mackay Beckton, Louisville highlights. Okay. You know what? No, no. We've actually seen enough of his highlights, but I do want to hear him speak. Oh, here we go. Ex Louisville OT Mackay Beckton joins PFT, which is Pro Football Talk. Uh, live to talk about how he's trained for the NFL scouting combine, why he loves to dominate defenders, and when he realized he was going to be a great player. That sounds like a great video. We're going to watch it now. All right, you saw him on the podium about 20 minutes ago, and he is here in the flesh with us at our setup at the Indianapolis Convention Center. Makai Becton, Louisville tackle. Makai, great to see you, pal. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Well, we've also got Shereen Williams, Chris Sims. Tried to fight through it, and he went back to the hotel. He may be back later. Shereen's going to fill in for a bit here. But, Makai, hey, uh, I, I was impressed by your answer. I mean, straight talk, no messing around. You believe you're the most dominant tackle sure. in the draft. What have you experienced while playing college football that makes you believe that? Um, just the way I dominate the man in front of me. It shows on the tape every play. Um, I'm dominating, making sure he falls every play. Who, ha who have you dominated the, the most? Who's <laughs> hey, that's exciting, man. Syracuse. Syracuse for sure. I, I don't really know his. I don't. I don't know his name off rip, but like Syracuse for sure. That's all I can say. We probably definitely saw some of those highlights. Bradley Chubb, my freshman year. What made him so tough? It's just he had different type of moves that I haven't seen before. So I mean, it was definitely a challenge, but I had four players against him for sure. Bradley Chubb. Oh, I was thinking of Nick Chubb. Bradley Chubb must be a linebacker, outside linebacker. A chance to see him again at the next level. Yes, sir. Who, who's that one guy that when you see him out on the field, you're going to say, oh my, I can't believe I'm out here with Tom Brady. that guy? Well, if he says Tom Brady, he's copying everyone else. Hopefully he says someone else. That's a lot of 
players. It's a lot of greats. So I mean, it's it's really hard to choose. Uh, it is. Say, uh, Aaron Donald. Just seeing him across the ball. I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be Star Trek at first, then I'm, this is gonna be time to play. Oh yes, bro! Imagine this guy going up. Imagine Aaron Donald trying to do everything he can to get past this absolute giant of a man. That is gonna be a matchup for the ages, and I cannot wait to watch that. Jets versus Rams 2020. Not tickets. 21st of December 2020. Now, I just better check if Aaron Donald. Still plays for the Rams. Yes, he does. And he looks like this. What the fuck is that? <laughs> okay. Did you watch any tape on him? Yeah, I did. I watched like, a little bit. Kind of. What do you think of his game? He's he's dominant, real dominant. He's a really dominant player. Do you study any other tackles? See their moves? See what they do? To how much of that do you incorporate into your game? Um, I, I incorporate a lot. I make sure, um, I always try to make sure uh, my stance don't show whatever play it is. That's what Tyrone Smith does. And he like he dominates real well as well. I think you trained at Michael Johnson. Did yes, ma'am. Yes, ma what was it like learning from a, an Olympian, 400 and 200, but, but learning from an Olympian, what was that like? It was great because uh, he, he taught me how to run. Like, um, growing up, I, I, I wasn't running the right way. That he taught me, so it was great. So I can't wait to run. What's your target? I, and look, I, I, I don't... That's sick, man. And speaking of run, I mean, this guy, you know, he ran a 5'11 at the combine, right? Which was so fast for his size. But at the end of the day, he's probably not going to be running more than 20 yards in any play, usually. Unless, like, they make, you know, their way down the field. So with that said, it's really the first 20, first 10 or 20 yards of that 40-yard dash that, that make, you know, the biggest difference. And that are probably the most impressive. And so, really, we want to know what his, you know, 20-yard dash was. Because that was probably even more impressive hold you to it and I know you're probably going to want to aim a little higher so that you come in under but what give me give me just a rough idea of what you're shooting for when you're on the uh, five two five two five two and low five two and below what about the uh, the bench press on the other side of the curve 30 plus 30 plus yes sir yeah I think okay so he's talking about five two seconds five point two seconds you said freakish numbers right yes sir it, all, yes, all, yes, all yes, the way sorry. through every every drill we're going to have some freakish numbers yes ma'am is it what, what drills are you bust in What's your worst drill? Uh, I feel like my best drill probably gonna be the forty. Okay. And my worst drill probably gonna be the L drill. Makai, how old were you when you made that first growth spurt that has pushed you towards six foot seven? Interesting. Great question. Hundred plus. Uh, like fourteen, fifteen. That's really when I started to hit my growth spurt because uh, it was one summer. It was like not summer, but like my dad got me some sweatpants, and then like within weeks. I needed some more sweatpants because they were hot water, so like, he was mad about that. He was like, you need no more sweatpants. I'm like, yes, I do, so. Dad, my sweatpants are shorts now. <laughs> yeah, right. Imagine that. You have to work to keep your weight on. Uh, I know a lot of guys, you know, the metabolism is still high, and they really got to fight, there. or is it uh, yeah. natural for you? No, I mean, um, at first, the, pr the problem with my weight, um, I wasn't eating enough because I would burn like 1,200 calories in a workout, and I wasn't replacing that in, few in food, so that was really my problem. So now I'm, I'm learning to eat more. So that, that helped me out a lot. I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. So you didn't eat mom and dad out of house at home when you nah. were growing up? No, nah, I, didn't, I didn't really eat. I wasn't really a big eater. When did you first realize, Crazy. And, and where was it, during a game, during a practice, working out, when did you realize that you were going to be a guy who could make it to the NFL? My 10th grade summer, when I got my first offer to uh, Delaware State, that's when I figured out I could take this to the next level. Who was it that, that contacted you and gave you the offer from Delaware State? Um, I went to a camp and I had left with the offer, so I don't remember that. That was like a while ago, so I don't think that staff is even there anymore, so yeah. I don't really remember that. And then did you feel like you carried yourself differently after that? Like, yeah, yeah I know I can do this. Yeah. And sometimes that confidence actually makes you that's better. Like that. that's you what know what you can do it, that's half the battle. This is quality I content. I got that first offer, so I feel like that's what it was. So where did you have a, a, a target in mind, a range, a high, low, where you're going to be drafted? Top 10. I, I think I'm going to perform well to go top 10. Yeah. Who was your favorite team growing up? Did the Washington Redskins. Redskins? Why, why the Redskins? They was close to home. Okay. You know, I'm from Richmond, so they was two hours away. And then my dad liked them too, so I just liked whoever my dad liked. Well, the Redskins had the second, the second pick? Yeah. Who was it that you were a fan of, specifically player-wise, growing up? Who was the guy you loved watching during games? Quentin uh, Portis. He was definitely my favorite running back. Uh, the name.
That's a name I haven't heard before. Clinton Portis. Amer former American football running back who played in the NFL for nine seasons. Went to the University of Miami, played for the Redskins and the Broncos. 426 40 yard dash. <laughs> Thompson was my favorite running back too. Growing up, I didn't really watch over on me. Like little kids, they don't, they don't watch. You know what? Fuck, I'm gonna have to write that guy down. So my man, they watch the skill players, so that's what I grew up watching. So Washington had the Hogs. Do you know anything about the Hogs back in the day? Yeah, yeah that offensive yeah. line. Yeah, I they know were about pretty the Hogs. impressive, weren't they? Yeah, real impressive. They got a decent offensive line now. I'll tell you what, uh, they're drafting in, but you never know how it's gonna work out. You never, know. and that's the thing. It's so uncertain for everyone. Unlike college, where you get to pick where you're going to go, mm -hmm. you have to wait and see who yeah. makes that call. And I think it, it makes it even more special when a guy gets to go to the team that he grew up rooting for. There's yeah. a chance that happens. That's a pretty high chance. It can definitely happen. What's this week been like for you so far? It's been great. I've been taking it in. It's a, it's a huge blessing. Just seeing these different coaches, talking to these different teams. It's great. It's a great, it's a great opportunity. It, any crazy questions that you've gotten so far? Ah, uh, yeah. One guy, actually no, no, I just had to rate. One time I had to rate uh, partying from a scale of one to ten. That was the craziest thing I ever did. What was your answer? A zero. I don't, I don't really like parties. Here's the, here's the key though. What they do during these sessions, they try to get under that was a good answer. to see mm -hmm. when you're going to react. I wouldn't recommend doing that with you. Right? <laughs> Six seven three sixty four. Don't try to get under this guy's skin, or you may end up regretting it. Yeah. Probably. All right, well, we're going to look forward to seeing you get under the skin of some guys across from you in the NFL. We wish you all the best, Thank Makai. You. Thank you. Have a great combine. We'll be watching your 40. We'll be looking to see what your numbers are in the bench press, and we can't wait to see which team drafts you and which team benefits from. Six foot seven, 364-pound, Makai back in the loop. Absolutely ridiculous. So in that interview, a couple of months before the uh, combine, he predicted that he would run a 5-2 or under 40, 30 reps on the bench and go in the top 10. So, the 40 yard dash he did, 510. Bench press, not quite, 23. And uh, well, we know what happened with the pick. Just one out, not too bad. Not too bad at all. So guys, that was my look at Mackay Becton. I really hope you enjoyed that. And uh, well, in the next one, I firmly believe that it is a skilled position. And I think his name might start with H. But if I can just check, if it is, I'm pretty excited because I've been waiting, waiting for a long time to see this guy. Henry Ruggs. I did see a little bit of uh, Henry Ruggs when we watched Tua's college highlights. So in the next video, we will be watching the 12th pick from the 2020 draft, Henry Ruggs III. And I wish you well. So with that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. And peace out.